Oh, we're gonna stop using Skype, man. Eh? No. Oh, there you go. Now it started recording. Now no one can hear what the hell you said in the beginning. Ha ha. Oh, well, fuck you too. <laughs> anyway, I'm never gonna use this card. I'm using Skype. I'm that old. Yeah, well, same, actually. <laughs> anyway, last week's podcast was a mess. Thank you for noticing. Yeah, but last, last week's podcast was entertaining. Like, come on, you gotta give me that much. Oh, yeah, I <laughs> guess. Like, I cannot make you shut up. I, that is good, I guess. Uh, that's what you want for a podcast. You don't want somebody who's just gonna be like there. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's true. You don't want that. You got me there, you got me there. Anyway, you played Super Persona 5, haven't you? Sadly, I did. Yeah. <laughs> And I made a podcast. Which number was that again? And the podcast number seven, where I talked about Persona? how much I hated Persona Five. Mm. Yeah. And you hate Persona Five. Listen, no, listen. I don't hate Persona Five. I just think Persona Five is overrated, right? Like the game is decent, but it drags out a lot. And overall, if you have to put like a one out of ten, I will give it like a five. It's a mediocre game that's been inflated by everybody else to insane proportions because it's their first personal game. I haven't played other personal games. They just, yeah. I mean, it was my first personal game too, but still, I, I wasn't blinded, you know? I still can see that the game is lacking in quite a few aspects. And it drags out when it really shouldn't. It should just end. But we're gonna no, talk about yeah, we should start off the fact that I was a fan of Persona 5 way longer than you. I got into the series thanks to Persona 3 and Persona 3 Portable back to the PSP days. And you just got into Persona okay. 5. Actually, I just went I just went on the PS5, five star, PS4 store and I was just like, okay, I was searching for games. Like, I don't know when Persona 5 came out and I was looking for games and I saw Persona 5 and I, I thought to myself that the game looks shit. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh... And then I saw I saw gameplay on YouTube and I was like, okay, fuck it, let's check it out. I went, uh, I clicked on the YouTube video and actually I really liked the game. I liked the li the slice of life aspect. That's what I really liked with the game and the way it looked, the atmosphere it had. That really clicked with me. I think that's what clicked with most people actually. Uh, and the gameplay wasn't bad. I'm not gonna say it was bad game. It was it was pretty solid. I was like, okay, looks sick. I watched a bit more. I got really into it. I was like, okay, I'm gonna stop watching YouTube. I'm gonna stop watching it on YouTube, and I'm just gonna buy it myself, right? That's basically how I got into the series. I didn't even knew what Persona was up until that point. The five is in the title, isn't it? Yeah, I knew it was the fifth, but I didn't. It's actually you the know, sixth, but still, technicalities. Uh, really? Yeah, I'm not even joking anyway, but yeah, but the thing is with Persona 5 is if it was like your first Persona game, it would probably be like the best Persona game because like you don't have the pre-knowledge of the past games like, oh, this is such a new and professional experience. And one thing Persona 5 does really well is the high school life aspects of it. And that's the, the size of life aspect is amazing. Like, but eh, I like <laughs> The slice of life aspect is really well done, it's nailed, it's spot on. The Wait, start with positives then. Sorry, you're let's start with, with positives. Wow, my internet sucks. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it does. It does. That's why we should stop using Skype for recording and finding other other ways to do it. You fuck. You lazy no. cunt. Anyway, no. Uh, Never. Anyway, let's start with the positives. Um, yeah, and I'm gonna go first because okay. it's my podcast. The first palace was absolutely amazing. Fair enough. Huh? Fair enough. It was like it's a good. The beginning part of the game is really good. The whole Kamoshiro arc on and Ryuji's character is like, yeah, pretty fucking solid for the beginning. Mhm. Mm I, I have to agree with you. The first, the first palace was really good. The story was well made, and yeah, it was well, it was really well made. It was a good way to get into the game. I don't have any complaints with you. But I still so like one of my favorite aspects is like when you start off the game makes pretty sure to know it, like, oh, the transfer student Joker, or what's his official name again? Ren, I think people start calling him, or Akira? I think it's Akira. Yeah, I don't know anymore. Okay, Akira, like when you start off, it's like, oh, he's a delinquent, he has a criminal record, and that's like a black, black thing, like. It's a, like a black shit, like people would distance you because of it. And the beginning part of the game really makes me feel really distant. And it's like, 
as a gay guy growing up in high school, it's like I really felt it felt like a, and I felt like a song. So I'm like, yo, I can understand this feeling because it happened to me. And it's like,、mm. it really nailed on the coffin in the beginning.、Mm. And it was the atmosphere like it was. And you have Shigo committing suicide. I was really gut wrenching as well, seeing An's reaction and then Ryuji's as well. Yeah, I just want to say you cut off. <laughs> Internet、oh, cut you off. God, how, yeah, how many times? That's good to know. But am I gonna、yeah. do anything about it? No. What you say? Am I gonna do anything about it? No. Fuck no! You're a lazy cunt. <laughs> Thanks. The navy is so good for me. You know, I, I get like five hours of sleep a day. I'm not totally not sleep deprived at the moment. You no, know, you're not the only one, man. <laughs> Granted, I guess I do have more of an option, but it's your podcast. We don't talk about we don't talk about my problems. We talk about your problems. <laughs> yeah, we、we'll、get、problems. we get we get to your problems later. Nah, but talking about the first part, us yeah, like you said, the the reactions that Ryuji and Anha were spot on, definitely. Like being hesitant to go after Kamishita with the possibility of him dying. So like. So when Shida committed suicide, they really did not care about that anymore because, like, oh god, Kamu Shida is just that horrible of a person. We don't care what happens to him. I was like, yo, that's realistic character portrayals. Good for your game. Clap, clap. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Like, uh, they. It does make sense. Like, honestly, if you were in real life, you had the same position. So, you know, may you would be hesitant at first, but after the whole suicide thing with Anne's friend, you would probably be like, well, fuck this guy. <laughs> Don't really care what's gonna happen. It's like so, like for for Palace, it was good. It was, it was. like puzzle wise, like as a whole, Persona Five is not really good with puzzles. Actually, like in the Palace, like they're okay, but they're not like actual puzzles. They're like a five graders math problem. I genuinely don't remember a single puzzle from the game. Yeah, that that's how you know it's bad. <laughs> If you don't remember a single one, you know it's not something impressive. I even remember Kamishita's palace theme. Is like soundtrack wise, Persona Five is kind of weak in my opinion. I know you disagree with me on that, but like, it's the palace themes that I could just not remember of it. I believe the.、Uh, that's I don't I don't remember the soundtrack either for his palace. It's in general for most things, I don't remember the soundtrack. So so it's not something new. Anything. Aesthetic-wise, Kamishita Palace looks pretty. Like the roses,、uh, the covered castles. Like, yeah, it's pretty.、Mm. Yeah, I mean, one thing for Persona Five is just overall the game looks pretty, and overall aesthetic-wise, it nails everything. I don't think there was an area in the game where I thought that it didn't look good. The game looked good throughout throughout the game. You know? Yeah, but then I also feel like it doesn't do much because there was never a moment in the game where, like, part of me. Just burped. I'm a professional.、Mm-hmm. There was not a part of the game that makes me go, "Whoa, this looks amazing." Sure, aesthetic-wise, it was pleasing, but it never really utilized it. Like, there wasn't a place in a palace. There wasn't a cutscene that, with the in-game engine, that looked so pretty that made me go, "Whoa, this looks gorgeous!" Like, it looks pretty, and that's all I can give it. Actually, I think the best, the best, and env-、um, you know, the best environment you can get, the best.、Uh... The thing that makes that makes the game pop out the most visually wise is when you're walking at night, shit like that, in the life aspect of the game, which is kind of I don't know. I wouldn't say disappointing, but you know, it's it's something definitely to notice. It's like the game looks the game looks the best when you're just walking around to see the world and explore everything in the in the world, right? Not in mementos, not in the palaces, just a normal, regular ass world, and that's kind of. It's kind of disappointing, but at the same time, it looks amazing. Like Shibuya,、ah. I remember the first time、uh, I played the game. I was like, "Damn, this is sick!" You know, it does make me want to go replay the game, but go through like on the east, because on the palace, because like I do think the palace is one of the weakest part of the game. Like most of the villains in the game don't feel like that memorable, other than Nijima and maybe Futaba. Oh, Futaba is actually one of the good characters. So, like, yeah. Who was Mijima? Sai, Makoto's sister. Oh. 
They can see no one, the one with the only yeah, good yeah, soundtrack. Yeah, 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 I got it, I got it, I got it. Eh, eh, that was, that palace was decent, but then again, you know, it was, it was a weird palace. You know, usually I would say I would have a pretty decent the memory, but good. like, what'd you say? The music was good, the Wimps of Fate is like, a, like one of the good tracks in the game. It is, and overall the palace is good, but... I don't remember that much. I think I think uh, it had like a grinding aspect to it. I uh, know it was like when it felt you need like to it had like the tokens. Yeah, that was the thing. I remember hating that shit. It was like the um, the letters that you need to collect in the final. Uh, it was the final palace. Yeah, the one with the politician. Yeah, yeah, we had where it was such an RPG that it was not even a joke. Like go there and go there, oh. and go there, and go there. Oh, what well, we gonna talk about? I got lots of shit to say about that one. <laughs> oh, there you uh. go. Now you got your memories back. Anyways, for like commercial palace for the fair palace, it was okay. It was good. It was good. Sort of like I would say, honestly, I would say a ten out of ten. I don't know what the fuck they could they could have done better. I guess the puzzles. They kind of made them better, but... Which you know. Royal does fix, actually, but, like, we're not gonna talk about Royal because I want to play through the first palace, and you haven't even touched Royal. Yep. So, we're, we're talking about the base game right now. Yeah, the original, vanilla. Yep. So, the next palace is Madarama, is the painter, and then again, it's like... It was okay. It looks nice. Honestly, I don't remember anything from that palace except the boss fight. I think the boss fight was like a few paintings and uh eh, I mean, it was, it was, it was alright, it was, it was kind of fun, I mean. Like, yeah, Yusuke's eh. awakening in the palace was good actually. Yusuke is one of the better characters actually. Not the best, but he's a good that's character. Not, that's not saying much though. Yeah. Yeah, damn, really, honestly. I don't remember the music, I can remember. I know the title of it, A Woman. I was like, that's okay. Uh, don't know. <laughs> well, don't know. I have nothing to tell about the music. Overall, gameplay wise, it was, I remember it's pretty solid. It was, it's solid. The second palace is solid. It's not, it's not a bad palace. Definitely not the worst in the in the game. Quite for, forgettable as well. Like, not even aesthetic wise. Right. Like, a museum was like there's nothing that really stands out other than the sliding doors towards in the middle half where they're just all slide together open that was pretty visual wise mm. could you i don't even remember that one yeah it's been a while <laughs> since we played the games it's fucking shows doesn't oh, it i think it's been like two or three years or something like that. oh god for son of fire is that all and i still hate the game for some reason damn it i don't hate the game like you do i just oh. think it's overrated <laughs> oh, that is true. Like near Automata overrated in my opinion, but <laughs> you never played near Automata. Near Automata is another question. Anyway, the next palace, Kaneshiro's, the fat guys. That's like the point of the game where I realized like uh, oh, this goes off. Yeah, I think that was the point where I was like, okay, this is this isn't. Like I said, I was so hyped with the first one. I was like, damn, this is the first one. This is the tutorial palace. Damn, this shit's sick. Then I went to the second part, I was like, okay, this is decent. And then I went to the, I went to the third part, I was like, uh, okay, this is kind of repetitive at this point. And then I saw, I saw the fucking Makoto's fucking persona was just a car, like a, it wasn't even a car, it was a fucking motorcycle. And I was like, ah, sick, I guess. <laughs> I was like, oh, her awakening is cool. Like most characters awakening is okay. Like they're not like, well, awakening, like. Four, which you never played, but like it was good awakenings. Mm. They're decent awakenings. Are decent. Some colors yeah, have like a better awakening than others. The color is the weakest character. She is she the is. weakest link. If you say Makoto is waifu, you're uh, you're wrong. Let's just leave it at that. You're yeah, wrong. Bad is <laughs> What you say? Like yeah, like she's the weakest waifu. Yeah, I mean, it's just that, that her character is so unbelievable. You know, it's like a teenager, a teenage girl that's that has the best grades in the school. Whatever the fuck, she's the school president and shit like that. You know, and she can be social. I was like, I can. And then like her whole, I remember doing her whole cop fucking friendship thing thingy. Confident. Uh, a friendship thingy <laughs> and that was just like it was, it was so shit i just remember i was like 
I'll, like at the end, I was just like, okay, I made a fucking wrong choice trying to boost the comfort and lung with you. I should have chose somebody else. Damn, this shit's boring. And that, that was yeah, really bad. Like... <sighs> yeah, I feel like it's like, oh yeah, they're like adults writing for a teenager. Like, that's not how a teenager acts, by the way, but sure. Yeah. Nah, it's just. I was... It was just bad. Mako is just a bad character. I don't know if she she's better or she's the same, the royal, or maybe somehow they made her even worse, which I don't believe they can, honestly. Yeah, because Mako can do that. You know, there's you know, there's a thing about when th- when things are bad. Like when something is bad, if it's if it's bad enough, it's, if it's like really bad, like dog shit tier, you can enjoy it because it just it's so bad, it becomes funny. You can make jokes of it. It becomes entertaining how much of a train wreck at the end of the day the the project or the game or the movie or whatever the fuck it is, right? But if it's just bad, like boring, that's the worst type of bad because it's just like there's nothing there's nothing about it. like it's just bad, <laughs> you know? Mm. That's my Which opinion. is a shame because the next palace, for top of this palace, is actually one of the best ones in the game. Yeah, which is kind of weird being followed up from the third palace and then the fourth palace, if, if uh, sorry, the fifth palace, if I remember correctly, was really horrible too. <laughs> yeah, well, we, yeah, we get to that, but like, Futaba is definitely like a step to the right direction. Mm. Palace wise, like, the music was good when Mother was here. My favorite part is the fact that you can actually hear the leitmotif of Tokyo Daylight, like the theme you play during the day of going around the city. Like, that's a cool tea to detail because Futaba is a character that wants to explore the world but she can't she locks herself in that's like a good mm-hmm. attention to detail but other than that it's like uh, it was good mm-hmm. it was good and it was visually appealing too you know it was it was unique it was entertaining I liked it um no, the fact and also that this is no you yeah. go you... I'm just gonna say you get access to Futaba's character which in my opinion she's overrated Oh wow, shit, the tea is boiling. I'm just saying, you know, like, she, she ain't bad character, but the whole... <laughs> ooh, shy gamer girl, ooh, type personality is kind of like... I get it, I guess okay. she ain't, she, I'm still not saying she's a bad character. Saying... Yeah, in general, I think Persona 5's female cast lacks a lot of personality. I don't know. Whoa, that's like the most weird hot take I have ever heard for Persona 5. Wow. Well, your podcast is quite unique. Let's just leave it at that. Oh, thanks. Anyway, like, as a whole, Futaba's like, the fact that it shows, like, oh, desires doesn't actually necessarily mean it's a bad thing. Like, Futaba's desire isn't actually something born from greed or something. It was born because of her own mother's death and that how it grew to her depression. But, like, oh, that's such a unique way of doing it. Hmm. The boss for the palace was kind of dumb though. It wasn't hard, but like, no. Oh. Uh, I don't remember anything for the boss fight. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's a fucking sphinx with the fucking head of the mother. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Her awakening as well is pretty cool because it's more akin to Persona 4, like accepting oneself so you can actually grow. So, like, yeah. That's cool. And that's pretty much the only good palace left in the game. Damn, Persona 5 is so no. forgettable. The more we talk yeah. about it, the more I realize how forgettable this game is. Like, it lacks so many things. Whatever, whatever. Let's move on. Fourth palace. And I think I know why, but I'm going to save it towards the end. Fifth. Fifth, fifth. Oh, my bad. Which is Okomura's palace, the spaceship one. Dog shit palace. Ah, uh, I think I beat this palace in one, in one day, right, in real life. It took me like a day to beat it, or whatever. I was bad. It was bad. Like I, I didn't like, I didn't like the villain. But, uh, honestly, I don't like. Uh, what's her name? Haru. It's not that I don't like Haru. It's just that she got introduced so late to the game, and like it uh, for me personally, it didn't allow me to talk to her for like such a long time that I just lost interest in the character. Mm. So. The palace didn't really make me want to talk to her that much. It wasn't. It, it was like uh, it was alright, but it wasn't. It wasn't something special. You know, Futaba's palace was much better, and it really made you more interested in Futaba, in Futaba as a character rather than Haru in in the fifth palace. You know, so that yeah, was yeah. quite disappointing. 
is really pretty with Haru with her palette. The way it's introduced is also the way they show that Ryu, Jim, and Morgana are fighting, and that took more of the spotlight than her, which is mm. really bad. Yeah, I remember that they were arguing a lot, but. Which amount to nothing, by the way. They resolved that issue real fast. Nah. I think I don't, I don't know how to resolve that issue, but I'm guessing it was something along the lines. Oh, you're a cat, you can't fuck her. And I'm human, so I win. It's like, ah. Sad. That's <laughs> pretty much the gist of it. But, like, I don't think Okamara's palace is as bad as people make it out to be. Actually, I think it has one of the most memorable themes, which isn't saying much, mind you, because, like, the palaces take, like, a couple of hours to beat you for some reason. The music, like, it takes two minutes to loop. That's, like, that's bad. That's that gets repetitive crazy. real fast. Yep. I mean, eh, it's not. It's it's really, it's really kind of like the second palace, honestly, or the third palace. You know, I just I don't think actually. I'm not sure if it was as bad as the third palace. I found the third, the third palace quite boring. But just at that point, the palace just mediocre. So you get you're starting to get really bored of it, and it's really repetitive. So at that point, you're just like, ah, just ah, end it, <laughs> please. <laughs> You know, uh, and it's and it's right here where the gameplay itself becomes really repetitive. But like, like we get to that because the next palace is like one of the good ones, which is Sai's Makoto's sister's palace, Nijima's. But it wasn't like a full palace; it was like half a palace or something like that, right? Oh well, yeah, it's more of a mini game based one. Like, oh, do some gambling, but turns out you cheated and you got more money than you had. Okay, that's something. Yeah, I remember the. I hated the whole finding coins or getting to the slot machines. I don't. I don't remember what exactly it was, but it was. It was something repetitive and really boring, and I fucking hated that. But the at least music the palace, made it more better. The music was good. The palace looked sick. But like, it was. It was with the whole weird ass plot with fucking the undercover detective. Ah, just. Ah, uh, was so. The, I don't the, know. Yeah, it's really important to the story. That part is really important to the story, but I still struggle to remember what exactly happened, you know? You know, you know that's bad. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's like, you know, it's like it's the introduction of the game, like, oh, you're in this casino, like, and then you have like a flashbacks of what happened before that, and then you're like, oh, so that's what happened, that's cool. Yeah, and then like the the detective tried to just chase you and shit around. Man, like, I, oh, Akechi is a horrible character, but we get to that later. Akechi should commit suicide. And he did! Yeah, it wasn't suicide, it was like a heroic sacrifice, I think. Yeah. Still, the only, the only good thing he did. And the mic picks up the dog, doesn't it? What'd you say? The mic picks up the dog, doesn't it? No? Yeah, it picks up the dog. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Oh, well. The dogs just shut up, so it's fine. Yeah, for now. I'm a oh. professional. Anyway, the next palace is absolutely the worst one in the game. Cheetos. Mm. The boat. Oh. It's literally all the problem I had with the game wrapped in a nice package. Nah, nah, I'm taking this one. Listen, this, this one's mine. I have hatred for this. <clears throat> Let's begin with the fuck that the... The fuck, the way the palace gets introduced to you is horrible, okay? Like, it just... Mm -hmm. The moment, the moment the cutscene started and started explaining what I had to do, I knew this shit was gonna be horrible. Guess what? It fucking sucked dick. I st from the, from the moment it started and it's explained to me that I had to collect five letters from five bosses or whatever fuck, like mini bosses. I knew this shit was gonna be grindy, repetitive, boring as fuck, and too long. And guess what? It was all four of those things. The palace structure was horrible. It was padded out with filler like I thought it was too much filler it was to a point where it made me quit the game for I think a month or something or two and like I quit the game for two months because of this shit it was so bad it was filled with too many bosses it was too repetitive the mini bosses were unoriginal non-creative very fucking repetitive it was horrible the mini bosses weren't fun at all they weren't even unique they weren't even creative right and then, and then after you get all of this bullshit, right, and you deal with all of this dumb ass shit, you get to sh Shiro, what the fuck his name is, right, to the final boss. And his final design isn't anything special, just muscles. It's like, okay, can you think of anything else? 
oh god, the, the before the his real form fight, it's even where it's like, oh, get it? It's golden people shaping into a pyramid, meaning he's the top of the food chain. It's, it's symbolic. Oh, like he's riding a drag, riding a line made of people go. Ah, oh, it's symbolic. It's like, okay, game. Clap, clap. Yeah, yeah there's just like muscles. Like, muscles, really? Like, muscles? Ah, uh, shit. Uh, I find... And that boss fight was fucking ass. It was like an hour thing. Like, an hour for that shit. It was so bad. I remember I was so bored on my mind. I fucking I was watching YouTube videos and shit. It was horrible. It was like an hour of torture. And the fact that there's more after it, oh, I just made me want to kill myself when I found out. Like, yeah. it, was, it was such a shit way to get to the end game of the game and wrap it up. It was so bad. It was horrible. Ah, just ah. If you like that boss fight and if you like that palace, I think there's honestly something wrong with you. A few missing brain cells, maybe. Like, ah, Jesus. I mean, fucking no, every- Frost, the fuck that enemy was. That shit killed me so many times. Yeah, everything about Shadow Palace really just sums up the reason I do not like the game at all. It's like, it's a day, everything just becomes really, really pe- repetitive. And it made me realize that, no, the, w- the way I realized that I hated Persona 5 was thanks to Final Fantasy 15, but we get to that later. And the thing is, with Shadow's Palace, is like, when you do the fights, last surprise keeps playing and that's it that's over and over and over and over and over and over again and it's like you never saw it coming no bitch i saw it coming fuck you (laughs) still played and it doesn't help that the gameplay the game even on normal mode is really easy it's like sure i can go to like the hard mode but i don't want to and so like it's repetitive and short. It just gets and Shido's Palace is fucking encapsulated that perfectly. Where you need to get those five election points. I'm like, mm. and it, it just drags out too much. It's like to the yeah to the point where I, I I started escaping battles because like they weren't hard. They're easy as heck. There's no point in even fighting them. Mm. And then you, you know, do people... mementos, and it's like even worse. People make fun of VA being a dead horse, and they did master the technique of recycling a corpse. But like, damn, Persona 5 really, they really try to to compete with VA on beating a dead horse. <laughs> oh, especially with a story where like, Fuck, you know. again, while playing through Final Fantasy 15, I really had Persona 5 because the thing is, if it's Persona 5, it's your first Persona game, you will not re- ever realize this at all because like it's your first game, you don't have nothing to compare it to to the past games. Because like. It's literally as Persona 3 and 4 again. You're a transfer student, something weird happens. You meet that jaw character, you meet that lover character, you meet that high empress character. It's like, oh, it's like points to points like past games. You're not going to try something new. You're going to do the same old, same old because you're scared the game's going to flop because after six years of development. I understand that. I mean, yeah. I mean, I didn't play the other game, so I don't, I don't have that. I'm not like, oh. This is this has been this has been done before, right? Everything was fresh for me. And still, even if you don't compare it to the old games, the game isn't anything special. Like it's ah, just uh, it's like... it, it it really fails on the on the action scene and the fighting and just the palaces. They're just too repetitive and no. they're too they're too dragged out. It's like they're trying to give you to give you like to, to pile out the time, so they're like, oh, the game six seventy euros or well, how much it was, but and I was like, it's really, it's a really long game, so it's worth it, right? No, no, the fact that the game can be like two million hours and it still won't be worth it if it's boring and just repetitive, you know? It's weird because the social aspect of the game is literally the most entertaining part of the game, uh huh, and that's and like. Most people will consider that the boring part of Persona games, actually. Like, if I explain the game to anyone out there, like my parents, they'd be like, oh, so you're playing as a high school student living on his high school life. That kind of seems weird, but it's like, it's really fun. Yeah, which is... Which is just kind of sad, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Whole, like, as a palace towards the end of the game. Like, it literally is just the same as Shido's palace. Like, it's even worse. Like, Wait, what, I just wanted saying? to get to the end of it. I just went... We're talking about mementos right now, like the final one, oh. the final palace of the game. Dude, mementos are fucking ass. <laughs> I I remember, I remember staying up late at night and playing, playing mementos and just listening to, 
YouTube videos, right? I think I was, I think I was rewatching Yu-Gi-Oh. I was that bored. That I was rewatching fucking Yu-Gi-Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> From all the things I could have rewatched, I watched Yu-Gi-Oh! And what Yu-Gi-Oh! GX? I know you don't know anything about Yu-Gi-Oh! But fucking... No, no, that's... I mean, we're not gonna talk about that right now, but still. The whole point is, I was rewatching something that I've already watched before, and it was still more entertaining than Mementos. <laughs> it's uh, like, honestly, I don't know where it happens, but that's the weird part. Because the game starts out so good in the beginning, and it fell so fucking flat. It because it drags out in the beginning, you know, but by the mid game, you start to get bored of it, and by the end game, you realize that it's just copy pasted with different enemies over and over again, really, and you're just really doing repetitive. the same really thing repetitive. over and over again. And by the end, you're just like, ah, ah, I've done this a million times, you know, it's the same thing with for me with school. When I go to school, I want to shoot myself, why? Because it's just the same thing, the same lesson, just <laughs> repackaged. That's it. No, just a have, different skin I, on it. Yeah, I agree with you. And the thing is, that's because I played through Persona 3 and 4, and, and you have, and I was like, that's the weirdest part. <laughs> because Persona 5 scares to try something. And it was not a friendship can solve any problem. Let's go kill God, which also came out of you nowhere, know, by the way. Yeah, the boss. That was just. Okay, you're the final boss. Good for you. Yeah, like after you beat Mementos, which is. Horrible, by the way. Horrible. Uh, very shit. You... What what, do you, what what happens later? I think you have to go and collect everybody because they're like in in prison cells and they're really scared or some shit like that. Oh, right? yeah. Pull up. Yeah, like, oh, can we actually save the world? Like, okay, game, Which, I've seen this before. Honestly, doesn't make any sense. It's like, dude, you've been doing all of this shit. By now, you should have, like, the confidence of a god, you know, like... You, sh- you should just be walking around and turning around bitch slapping people with your dick. You know, you should have that much confidence in you with all the shit they've done, right? But apparently no. Apparently no. For some reason, they're starting to become pussies right now, you know? And then you gotta have to collect them all. It's like you're playing a Pokemon game. Can I catch them all? You know? And uh, yeah, that's, that's something. It's not, it's not really that entertaining. and You don't really get much much of the characters because every character is depressed and there isn't a character where he's like you know what actually i believe we can do it you know somehow you're the only one that's the chosen one it's, it's like depressed it's like, no, 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 when we started on joker it's like oh joker your words have touched me it's like i just chose the dialogue option i have my personality is that of a breadstick it's like okay i just told you you had a big clip <laughs> no Okay, then I was like, it's sad, really, like... But the ending part itself, like, after the final boss where the protagonist goes home and, like, everyone's saying goodbye to him, that was actually an okay scene. No, that scene was good. That scene was good. But well, well, let's talk about the final boss. The final boss was dog shit, okay? There's nothing you can... And getting to the final boss was also so horrible. Even worse. So horrible. You remember where you had to climb to up to heaven or whatever fuck <laughs> to the skies, and then there was so many there was so many enemies to the to the path where you had to get to the final boss. Ah, that was so fucking AIDS. Those enemies were horrible, and the final boss was so long and so dragged out. It was like constant healing, constant buffs and debuffs and shit. Ah, it's not even hard. They just too long honestly i remember like I, I didn't go to i went to bed like an hour later that day and like i was like i lost sleep for that shit and i wasn't happy of it i was like this this wasn't worth it <laughs> and again like an hour long boss and you get like a two minutes theme of the final boss and like it's two minutes long it's like damn you know that you know that actually i muted i muted the game quite a few times in those boss fights <laughs> because I it was so like i do not blame you I hate it. I was like, after 10 minutes, like, okay, fuck this. I muted, I muted my TV and I just put something on my PC. <laughs> like, it's, it's weird because, like, there's a reason why Nier and Amato won soundtrack of the year that year. <laughs> Again, Persona 5 doesn't have a bad soundtrack. It's just overused. And the soundtrack is something that you would use for, like, a shorter game. Right? If they wanted to do such a long game... They should have made more songs, or at least longer songs. 
That's the problem. And I think my also issue is that they had only one person composing for the game. It's sure they it listed two composers, like other ones, like you do not know them, so I'm not gonna even try naming them. Like they did some tracks, but they were like the bonus contracts for the game, like the mini games you can play, the arcade. But the main composer is like you can not just have one guy make a hundred hour worth of video game music. It's just like it's not good. It just it gets repetitive real, really, really fast. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, shit. There's not much to say honestly about it. It just it was just one dude. Eight percent and of high. It was just one dude, and the songs he made were, were good, but they weren't long enough, and there weren't enough songs. For Personas 5 long uh, runtime, the, oh, this like issue could have been easily fixed with just more songs or longer songs. That's it. Yeah, it's like, like the only good battle theme I can remember that I, I do listen to to this day is Rivers in the Desert. Mm. I mean, I, I don't agree with I, you, but I get where you're coming from. Oh, so well, like, what was your favorite final battle theme of the game? Battle theme? Don't know, man. I don't know, I don't know the battle themes. I don't know. I just know that I like Benny the Mask. Benny the Mask is a good song. <laughs> oh, yeah, like, it's one of, the, one of the best tracks in the whole it is, series. It's the, be- like... it's the best song in the game. <laughs> no, quite bar none. But still. That's not saying much, though. Eh, it isn't, but everybody loves Beneath the Mask, so, you know, that's something, I guess. That's no, a positive. I, I've never, yeah, I haven't seen true. a person who actually hates Beneath the Mask. It's a song that everyone can get into, even those who are not even familiar with Persona 5. Yeah, but even people who don't really fuck with chill music or jazz and shit, they still, they still like it. They still vibe to it. It is what it is. So we talked about the palaces and the bosses, and I like how we didn't actually talk that much about them because honestly, there's not much to say. It's like, and it's weird because the game, like I remember, like when the game was first being released and stuff, like ah, it's the first time we're not doing randomly generated pa- uh, dungeons. We're actually making fully designed ones from the scratch. It's like, oh, that's such a hype thing to say. So what's we what we got was like, oh shit, son, that's not this is this is not good. Mm. It was just like we said before, and we're gonna keep saying it was just too long. It was too dragged out. Yeah, it's, it was like Persona 4 was long as well. Persona 3, and they did not feel as drag on. It's like, what went wrong? That's what I'm wondering. Don't know, just the game just feels too stale at the end. I think that's it. it uh, the thing is. You can argue, oh, that's because you played the other games and you know how the games go and you know the structure. But I didn't play the other games and I still felt like, at the end, I still felt really bored of it and I still I felt like it was really stale and it was dragging out too much and it was like filler, you know? So even to a new coming person, it should still feel like you're dragging out, you know? So. That- And another thing I did not like about Persona 5 at all is definitely the main protagonist, like Joker. Like, sure, I like his design, but he's the, as bland as you can get. It's like, I've seen this done like two times before. Can I get a person next time? And You're like most out. JRPGs. I get it. Love he's out. a character. Like, I know, like, but the Joker, he's so bland as a character, and this, and it happened for twice, like Persona 3 and 4, like, Persona 3 I can understand, but Persona 4, no. It's like, I want a little bit more character. I understand he's supposed to be a character, you're supposed to project yourself, like, one thing Persona 5 can give to a lot of people is definitely having a social high school life. I guess a lot of people never had that, and Persona 5 can be quite fulfilling. But mm. for me, it's like, it's not. I don't want to live a fantasy. I want, I want him to be a character for once. Hmm. But... Wait, in Persona 3 and 4, right? Was it the same thing? Was the main character yeah. still blonde? Oh yeah, you're blank. Yeah, like Persona 4, but with Persona 3 made sense because the whole game is about death and life. So it's like, oh yeah, I can understand why the protagonist is an emo fuck. So, do you think you're just... you don't? Do you think that you don't like this aspect just because you've experienced it before? 
or yeah, just in general. Why? Because, the, one of five has... because I didn't have an issue with that, you see? And I'm a newcomer mm -hmm. to the series. Maybe that's the whole thing. Yeah, it's bad for, for recoming visitors, but to the newcomers, oh. it's not a big thing. I've seen this done. Yeah, I understand. The thing is with Persona 5, like, I've seen this done before and I've seen it done better in past games. Like, even with Persona 2 and 1, which people don't seem to mention a lot, I've seen it done better in those games. Persona 5 seems to be really ashamed that it's Persona 5, like, oh, it's, I'm the fifth title. What, the reason, the only way I find out that I did not like was Persona 5 was thanks to Final Fantasy 15 and its story. Final Fantasy 15 was not ashamed to say that I'm the 15th game in the series, like... I'm gonna take my past experience and make something completely new out of it to not make the same shit again. And Persona 5 does the same shit again. And but you cannot. I can also understand where they're coming from because, like, in the end of the day, they're investing lots of time and money and effort into this. And if it just if the project sinks, the company sinks too with it. You know. That is it's, true. The Persona 5 is. You can tell that they put lots of budget and effort into it. You know, they put. And the resource they put lots of resources into it, so they cannot afford for that game to flop. They that's just not a reality they can accept. That's why they went to the say they went to a safe story and the safe route. And I mean, yeah, I guess it worked. Out. Yeah, you know, people oh, people yeah. bought Persona that. Persona Five shit. made millions for them. Yeah, yeah, but I also have to I have to um, admit that probably most of the success. That Persona 5 had was because of new coming people like me. I just they knew what Persona 5 even was, what Persona, what the Persona series is, and they just like, oh, this looks sick. Maybe looked into it and like, okay, that looks cool. Got the game, and yeah, and they add that shit up. You know, most newcomers don't even admit that the game gets stale by the end. Although, matter of fact, they don't admit that the game has any issues at all. They think it's like a masterpiece, a 10 out of 10, perfect. No. No problem whatsoever. Which, by the way, no game can be perfect. No game can be a perfect 10 out of 10. No issues whatsoever. There was always, there's always going to be an issue in the game. And that just, in, that just goes in general for everything. People who don't admit that, they're, they're just wrong. There's nothing. That's just a flawed way of thinking about things. No, I know you and I do not like Persona 5, but that's not saying that Persona 5 is a bad game. It's still a good game in its own. And like, if this is your persona, first Persona game, your first JRPG, and you say you love it, you don't care about the flaws, that's okay. But like, yeah, but most so people don't up. even, the, most people don't even want to admit that they have the game has flaws. That's the problem that I have. The community is just so fixated on the game that it's a 10 out of 10, no issues whatsoever. It's like, dude, like, we have we're not even done with all the issues that the game has which is all we talked about right now is the music and the palaces that's it we, we still haven't uh, talked about the characters uh, uh they're like a whole can of worms most of them sucked yep and it that's didn't fun. took until the fucking dancing spin-off game for me to actually start liking them it's bad it's weird which, if you're, if you're hoping that people are gonna buy a dancing game for 60 euros so they can get the, they can get the character development for the character that should have been in the normal game, you're fucking insane. And when I need the best part, the game sold so poorly that they cut the price down permanently. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually amazing. Yeah, it's like, that's what you get for being greedy. Ah, like, ah, yeah, man, like, 60 euros for a dancing game? I was like, okay. Yeah, Persona 5 Royal fucking, Persona 5 Royal sold really good, and I'm like, I'm disappointed. I told you, the community is a, is a bunch of retards. <laughs> mm. Again, uh, not saying Persona 5 is a bad game, but still, it's not the best. Persona 5 is a mediocre game, okay? And it's, it's overrated. Like, yeah, like... I played through Kingdom Hearts 3 and I'm like, I'm gonna go into the community, see some comment section on YouTube, and then I see how people say, oh, the god, this is so bad, Persona 5 is so much better, and I'm like, I'm gonna start smoking again. I've never actually seen people say Persona 5 is a better game compared to something else, honestly, but... No, it's like, uh... when you look at Persona 5 solely, it does, but when you go through, like, Kingdom Hearts 3 community or, like, Final Fantasy 15, it's like, for some reason, that's the game most compared to, for some reason, like, with Nier Automata as well, it's like, why do, you, why do those people compare it to those games a lot? I do not know. Maybe it's just because I don't play those type of games that much. To yeah, that is, well. I guess. But I can imagine that how that can be really annoying. 
Yeah, but like Final Fantasy is like the best game ever made. Nah, nah. It's fucking better than Persona 5. Listen, I don't know anything about Final Fantasy 15 or Final Fantasy in general, so I ain't gonna say shit, you know? But I, I don't know, I don't think Final Fantasy 15 beats Persona 5 on like the visual aspect and like the atmosphere. No, it might be wrong. Weird why. Yeah, because when I remember playing through Persona 5, there was not a single moment thanks to the visual where I was like, whoa, this looks gorgeous as fuck. But with Final Fantasy 15, it goes for the realism look, which for me, it's a really bad thing when a game does it because it can look outdated so much. But I said, holy crap, this looks amazing more in Final Fantasy 15 than I did with Persona 5. And that boggles my mind. I don't know how. I don't. I wouldn't agree on that because I think Persona 5 has quite a unique style. And like when I look at Persona 5, I'm like, damn, that's sick. That looks amazing. But and also that just it it has an atmosphere to it. Like the the slice of life of life aspect when you just walk around in the city, that's just amazing. You know, that's the thing I enjoyed the most about the game. And it, yeah, there's no way I can I can talk shit about that. That's the Please. best part about the game. Definitely, but I feel like it never really utilizes. Like with Final Fantasy 15, sometimes I just get chills with the things to the music and atmosphere. But Final Fantasy, but Persona 5, it does make me feel really chill. I love going through Shibuya at night and having been if the mass play, but I've never said, holy Kanoli, this looks pretty. Uh, I was uh, never amazed by the visuals. I was impressed by them, but never amazed by it. It's still like Persona 5, one of the best aspects of it is definitely the visuals, but like graphics, it isn't everything, apparently. I, I don't know, man. That the uh, just the visual and the atmosphere really, really, you know, just sick. I really got sucked into it, the way it looked and just how chill it was. And I was just vibing with it. I was just, I was just walking around. And I was just vibing, you know, which I don't really do that in video games. So I was like, okay, this, they've done something right here. If I can enjoy this, a person who doesn't really care much about this gets really sucked into this. They've done they've done something out here. Yeah, no, actually happening? to be honest, if Persona game will like a regular slice of life like an anime, but like oh you just walk around and do some story stuff. Like I think that would have been okay, like a light novel. I think the game would have been so much better if you take all the palaces and personas out of it. <laughs> Which is kinda of sad. <laughs> Honestly it's weird. Uh I'm like, I'm still kind of... I guess we should talk about the confidence in some of the characters of them. It's like, the time. ones that stuck with us. Okay, you go first. I'm not gonna talk about all of them, because most of them are fucking boring as fuck. Like, I'm sorry, Chihaya, I do not think you were an interesting character, but why the we... fuck was the politician more interesting than half the fucking main cast? Wait, wait, wait. I think, I think a first thing is to do. We're gonna mention our favorite characters, what we liked about them, right? And then... Mm. We're quickly gonna pull up a list online, and we're gonna mention all of the characters, and we're not gonna go down much in depth, but we're just gonna go, you know, what comes to your mind first when when we okay. mention those characters. I think that's I think that's a fair way to look at it, you know. And uh, then I have much to say. Then okay, you start with your favorite characters. Oh, I'm getting first. Well, I will say let's begin with Sojiro. Like I I like Sojiro a lot. I think he was a cool character, and he was like a very Mellow Connolly, just chill type of dude, you know, just kind of like, eh, I don't care, <laughs> you know, type of thing. I, I respect it all. And then the, the story he had with Fudawa and uh, and Danko, I was abusing them for money, well, fuck. I was pretty sick. Um, oh, yeah, the soldier is a really good father figure, like, and, it, and he slowly warms up to the main character as well. Like, I actually started seeing you as my as a kid or like my young son. I'm like, oh, that's actually quite sweet. And I think of them like with Futaba, like the small little family. They're like, I can see that happening. Yeah, which is it, it, it's quite sick, but it's weird when you when you try to fuck Futaba because then you're kind of like, I guess. We do not talk about that. Fucking your sister. But ah. you know what? You know what? I guess Japan should have an Alabama of their own. <laughs> anyway, but Sojiro is an amazing character in the game, right? That's just I say. Well, I think we both agree on that one. Okay. Oh, who else? I really like the politician. I remember yeah, the politician, in the beginning. Man, it was like, yeah. It was like it bugs me. Like he's more interesting than like fucking Makoto and and at points. It's like, how do you do that? How do you fucking make the fat politician more interesting than them? 
in the I remember I, in the beginning of the game or where whenever you get access to him, I just I constantly spammed his confident link, and I talked to him, you know, consistently and a lot. He was he's a really sick character. He has an interesting story, an interesting point of view, and you know, he's just there trying to redeem himself. And then when and then he's he's one of those characters where he doesn't need to be told, oh. You're you're a phantom thief, or when he says I have a problem, and then you fix the problem using mementos, because that's what that's every th that's every fucking character actually. They tell you a problem, you fix it with mementos, and then they suck your dick. With this character though, he's just like, oh, by the way, I know that you're a phantom thief. I was like, wait, what? How? Yeah. Bitch, you, <laughs> when bitch, he breaks I didn't do, I didn't do anything. When he breaks the formula, it becomes so much better because the same thing with the Moon Confidant Mishima. Mm. He's also I like, a, really good, a really good character. Obviously. Yeah, I like his mementos because like, oh, you do go to mementos, but you don't fight his shadow. You're like, yo, you have problems and you should deal with it yourself. So like, bye. And I was like, yeah, that's that's one way of doing it. And I like it. Yeah, like he's also a good character. Um, who else? I I liked Ryuji a lot. But the uh, problem with Ryuji... Character. Ryuji is a very good character, right? Let's just get that let's just get that out of the way. But the problem with Ryuji isn't the character itself, it's how it's the writers hard. treat the character. Where yeah. half of the time where it's like he progresses his his men mentally he progresses like he progresses his character and shit like that. But then he ends up being part of the joke every time. It's just kinda like okay. They, why? Why? Like come on. I was like, wow, Ryuji, you saved their lives. Thank you so much. Okay, we're gonna keep you, we're gonna kick the crap out of you because you made me sad. Like, okay, on, you're a good character. I get it. Fucking it's like, I was like, you saved their own lives, but you thought you were dead. <laughs> Bam. I was like, ah, oh, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck Other up. than Futaba, most of the female fandom themes, they're really forgettable. Like, Makoto, Aan, and Haru was like, I cannot say a single thing about the personalities that I genuinely like in their confidants. It's like, hmm, that's okay. sad. We're gonna get to it. Okay, so so far, who do we like? We like Sojiro, Ryuji, the politician, the politician. then the the nerd, the nerd that does the phantom hey, website. Mishima, yeah. Okay. Uh, I think the doctor is also a good character. I like the doctor. Oh, Taya Takemi, yeah, she was okay, but I can barely remember her content. It's weird, like, and I'm someone who fucking reads their dialogue like Christianity level, but it's like I do not remember a single thing. It was something about a child, and um, she was trying to find a cure for the child's disease or something like that. There was an old doctor that, that was bullying her. It's forgettable. It is, but she she's a good character, you know? I don't like me, myself, some goth titties, you know? <laughs> Design-wise, yeah, her character is great. That's why I like Kawakami as well. The teacher's like, yeah, that's like, fuck me. But she's the best girl. I don't care what everyone else says. Her confidence sucked. I do not like it at all, but like... The dates you go on with them on like Christmas and like yeah they're good I like them. Uh yeah, the same I think the same thing applies for a doctor pretty much. Okay, for like, me as well it's also like design wise I like yeah. her but the confident wise like oh I didn't see better. Yeah, it's like oh apparently my mom's a psychopath and all of her matches have been set up and I actually sucks dick at this game. Wow, wow that's. That's a shocker. So I'm um, at Which the end. At the end, me. she went from a pro to like back to the like beginner league because she sucked dick at the game. <laughs> she was like, okay. No, which reminds me, which is another thing I'm annoyed with Persona 5. Like, oh, it's like the fifth, sixth game in the series. You think they will change? Like, oh, when you when you're in a relationship with someone, like with Hifumi, like, oh, she's your girlfriend. They're never gonna mention that in the main plot at all. And it goes to points where the character's like, oh, let's go try hunting down for girls. And I'm like, I'm in a relationship. Why would I do that? That's just like it makes me so uncomfortable. It's like, hmm. bye game. And it's like I I and I, I know and I hear people voice this opinion as well, and then I see people defend the game by saying like, oh, it will make the writers have to write more dialogue, and I'm like, so they're gonna do their job. So like, okay, really a much. It's not only about writing more; it's also about programming, and that's a lot more time and money, which maybe they didn't have. Like, it's like the thing is like the sixth game of the series like three games in a row they've been doing the same thing and i'm like i'm in a committed relationship guys i'm playing as a straight person for once can i not do this can i not do this right 
Why would I need to cheat on her? Like I said, more more money, more time. Maybe they didn't have that. You have to develop it for a long time, for sure. Yeah, there's also that thing. Uh, it's been for quite a while, so you should you should be expecting that to be included, I guess. But that's just the flow of the game. There's nothing else to be just said. Like now, when Persona Six is announced and it's another fucking transfer student, I'm fucking throwing the community down to hell. Fair enough. Uh, but so far, what have we what have we concluded? A cast uh, of good me, characters. Uh, except that. a cast of good characters, a cast of meh characters, right? Oh my so god, was a good them. character. Morgana is a good character. I'll give you that much. But uh, I've heard some things about Royal where it's gonna where the cat becomes a human or something, and I hope that doesn't happen because like, nah, nah, that shit would be horrible. Oh, don't get me started on World because when I was playing the game and I saw some like I was I'm listening to the soundtrack even though I haven't been in the game yet. And the thing is, if the game goes to the whole illusions are a bad thing and we should always embrace the truth again, I'm gonna fucking scream. That's most I'm like scared. what's the story gonna be? What are you gonna? I don't want. To, I don't want. So I've seen it done how many times? I'm like I don't want another fake reality again. Damn it! You should accept it. <laughs> yeah. Except no, the reality. Like the ending for Morgana, like the ending for Morgana, like I did not get what I wanted, but that made me a better person. Like I may never turn into a human, but that doesn't mean I'm a, I'm gonna stop looking for it. I was like, oh, I like that ending part for him. Hmm. Morgana is a good character, but I can see how it can be fucked up and wrong. But we're not talking about so. Morgana is also being put in the good character pile. Let's let's leave it at that. Uh, a fucking gun man. Look, from, I think he's a good character, but I didn't experience his confident link, so uh, there's really not much I can say. People fucking lost over him, but he's so fucking generic, like, if you really? think he's a hot guy, it's like, mm, you, need, you need better taste, man. Dude, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't do his confident link, honestly, I have no fucking idea what the character is. The, the character velvet story room attendants we have not talked about at all, Caroline and Justine. Eh, there, all right. Levenza is a better character. What? Levenza, like I like her design. I think she looks adorable with her little socks. With like her knees, her socks, they're adorable. Hmm. Fair enough. I mean, yeah, uh, they're really, they're really like oh, they're polar opposites. Like the two midgets, right? It's just like oh, one's. Complete dick, and the other one's shy. Or fucking, I was like, I can't. I can. oh, like in the end, like, oh fuck, you need to execute us and fuse us together. I was like, okay, sure, I can cut your heads off. <laughs> sure, I've been waiting for this the whole game. Damn, let me do it. Come on, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, they're they're main characters are better. I would say they're really forgettable, really kind of bland. You know, there's not much to them. You know, it's the opinion. one that I doubt you even remember. Is the towers arcana? What's that? The little boy, the one that has the hat on. I didn't even know he fucking existed. Honestly, could no, you imagine no, I that? I completely I missed out on his character. I don't even remember his name. Hmm. Yeah, neither do I. So the, I literally have nothing to say about that character. Nothing. The reporter as well. Like I can appreciate her design. It's not another one. Oh yeah, we designed her so you want to fuck her. Because, like, you can still date her as a lot. That's a step in the back. The the reporter, honestly, I have nothing to say for her. She's she's really, I don't know, didn't do her full confident link. I did a few, um, I did a few times and I just gave up on her. I would put her, I would put her in the bad character section just because, not because she's a bad character or anything, but just because I found her boring, you know? And I think boring for me is bad. Definitely. The thing is, like, Persona 5 really shows, like, oh, yeah, we made most of the female characters, they're designed to look really good, so you can buy figurines of them, so we get more money. It's like, you can tell that the, like, the game is just a giant marketing tactic. Like, oh, you think this is cool? Oh, you want to buy figurines for the dungeon? Like, oh, you like this lady? You want to fuck her, right? Here you go. Like, (laughs) okay, game. I see what you're doing there. And I will buy the teacher figurine one day. Watch me. Shy. But overall, I think I'll put that character, those characters in the category section. 
Um, Probably with a, with a gun shop man, too. Ego's yeah, reveal. Igor as a character. What about him? Ah, he was. I thought he was really sick. I thought he was entertaining. So, but the honestly, fact, yeah. Yeah, like the fact that he was revealed to be like oh, the mask. It's like oh, he's the other boss in disguise. That took me off off guard because like. I was into Persona like in Persona 3 and back then he had a different voice actor, like a Japanese voice actor. Like he had this soft, high pitched voice. Like mm-hmm. he tragically died during the development of Persona 5. So he got a new voice instead and he sounded really deep, like a fake, like not his voice at all. And I thought, oh, it's just an artistic interpretation. They're trying something new out because Igor is such a mysterious character. But the fact that it was in the plot that like all turns out is not actually Igor. And once you find out about that and you free Igor and he gets like his record of voice by like, oh, I've been bamboozled. Good for your game. You got something out of me. I'll put Igor in the good character section. Honestly. Yeah. Um, Yus- Yusuke. What about him? Oh, God. Like in the base game, I didn't. I thought he was OK, but nothing memorable. But with the dancing game, he made I, he made me appreciate his character so much more. I don't know. For some reason, I liked him. <laughs> I I really didn't have any good reason to think he's a good character. I just I liked him. I don't know. Mm. For me, he was like, oh, like I'm a, I'm a character. But then afterwards, like, oh, I'm a poor character that has no money. I'm gonna do some random shit now. And then like that's pretty much his character for the entire game. Yeah, kind of, kind of. But I don't know. It's, he has potential, which I guess they used in the dancing game. So it's not like he does have potential, right? But. Mm. I guess in the base game, you just don't see it fully. So you can put him like in the mediocre character section. The same thing with Makoto and Haru. And then like the beginning, oh, they're kind of like characters. But then afterwards, like, okay, Makoto's going to be the one we're going to force upon you. We're not going to say you should date her, but we're going to pull her shit away down your throat. And then like, mm-hmm. that's pretty much it for the other female cast. Like Futaba, like, yeah, she's the only good female main cast, I will say. Base game. Makoto, Haru, and... Um... On. On. I put those bitches in the bad category sections for for the characters. I, th- I feel like they're quite bad slash boring slash bland characters, you know? Like, Makoto has nothing unique about her except the fact that, oh, I'm shy. I don't know how to talk to people. She's not even shy. She's just like, I'm autistic and I can't talk to people, apparently. So I just kind of like, eh, pff. okay. I don't know. That's I can't believe we forgot weird. to talk about Koro Akechi. We're gonna get to him, don't worry about it. We're He's gonna actually get the only him, characters we have not talked about yet, actually. Those three characters, I put them in the bad category section. Right? So, we haven't talked about... Yeah, Akechi, but we also haven't... We haven't talked about Makoto's sister. Oh, Saya, she's, I like her design, but like, she's really just there for the main plot. She doesn't have her own personality wise. Mm. And I can appreciate the game. They did not make her like a love interest. Like, yeah, I give you that much, but I'm pretty sure the only reason they didn't do that is because they could not write that in the main plot. So they got lazy. Mm. Like, you're already fucking her sister. Yeah, that's kind of a bit difficult to fuck her, too. Well, you, you, know all this... te- you can do your teacher. There's always hentai for that. <laughs> no. Hell, the anime show that can happen is weird. The anime had like this weird ballot time special thing. Like, oh, you go out on dates with them in this first person view. And she got one. So it's like, okay. So it could happen. I, I, I will uh, say it. What the fuck her name is. I will put her in the meh to bad category section right? I, I will put her in the okay side because the game didn't force me upon the throw like oh you should fuck her like oh game you did not make me do it good for you she's she's a mech character for me I also didn't talk about Futaba I think Futaba is a decent character honestly she's a decent character but after a while she gets boring it's just kind of like I get it you're an introvert you know you lock yourself in uh, yeah, yeah 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 there's a reason why you like that but like you know, after like the sixth time, it's kind of getting re- too repetitive and boring. So, you know, can you, can you stop? <laughs> That's just me. And then Pancake Boy himself a catching. 
Ha, catchy. Well, he what was... can we say about a catchy? Well, he he looked suspicious from the very beginning. Honestly, it was like, okay, he's uh, something. Like, something's I, off about this cunt, you know? Like, I fucking hate the fandom thieves. And the lady's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to join you guys, but I'm so not going to betray you. JK, fuck you guys. And then he pulls out a gun. And then, and then he fucking becomes um, a hero and he sacrifices himself to save them. And you're just kind of like, oh, that's cool and all, but it doesn't redeem you from all of the horrible shit that she did. You know? Like, didn't you murder people, by the way? Haro, how's your father, by the way? Yeah, then th he also murdered uh, Futaba's mom. Well, who, who killed Futaba's mom? Actually, I don't think. Was it Kitchi even warm? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Either either way, like, it is, it was still like a bad character in the sense of like, you know, he was evil. So one good thing doesn't redeem all of the other bad shit he did. It just kind of makes you, makes you like more alright, I guess, <laughs> right? So there's that. Well, I don't know. Well, the reason I do not like him though is like definitely the fact that like the like the biggest mystery, the plot of the game, like one of the twists is like, oh, you think Joker died in the cutscene, but JK, he did not die. Okay, let's tell you how that happened. That whole scene, like after the final, after the casino palace, that just felt really bad storytelling wise because the game literally told you like, oh yeah, we're not going to tell you what actually happened. We're going to not show it to you. So everything will seem like a giant surprise when you find out. I remember it being some dumb shit with uh, with mementos and shit like that. You got shot in mementos or something, and then yeah, like that. Oh, it's not they it's exit the, the mementos. I just nah, it was it was so hit can. I catch I would say he's a meh character, honestly. He's real of him being the traitor was not a surprise either like I could tell that a mile away and I'm a fucking dumb fuck yeah it wasn't it was quite on it was quite obvious he's like he's not a bad character but he's not a good character either. you know he's he's all right he's just kind of there you know just yeah and, and, like actually he's the only like I know there's like a full left field, but his voice actor, he's really fucking good. Mm. Yeah, but we're not talking about that. that's that's completely different. I was like, even though it's weird, people have like out of all the issues we have, the game to translation is not one of them. And I see a lot of people complain about the translation of Persona Five. What's what's wrong with the translation? Uh, I have no idea. It's like. Do you remember that eight hour long video on Persona Five that makes me like Persona Five for five minutes? Yeah, no, but what were you talking about? Like, I don't know. I think his name is Sivit, but whatever. All I can say is, like, yeah, the translation is not bad. It's one of the best ones. It's, like, the best translated game I've ever seen. But, like, mm, that's, like, another topic. Localization is fun. I have no interest in talking about the translation of the game, of the goddamn game. When they're talking and their lines aren't fucked up and the, and voice, the voice acting, acting is, is good, good, I don't have a problem. That's yeah. all I care about. It is, like, a spelling error somewhere. Hitting the items, I could give less of a fuck, honestly. <laughs> but like, but for me, yeah. I, oh, so you can, no, you continue. Before we move on to anything else, I think we forgot one card that was like the the fortune teller. Oh, Chihaya, I just mentioned her. I like her design; she's fucking adorable. But other than she, that, she, she, she's quite fuckable. Okay. Oh. Yeah. But <laughs> she is fuckable. But overall, her character story. It is lacking quite a lot. Like, I remember the only reason why I want to talk to her in the game and develop the confidence link is just because I thought I thought she looked good. You know, I was like, oh, sick. She like she looks nice. I'm gonna talk to her. And then I was like, ah, you're kind of boring. But you know, only for her design, I'm gonna put her in the all right tier. <laughs> uh, you know, we got it. What we got? Her design is adorable. She Even she's though, a not like, yeah. You need to spend like fifty thousand yen on her. I was like, okay, game, thanks. Honestly, but well, at one point in the game, you just have so much money, there's you don't have anything to do with it, so it's just kind of like, eh, you know, not that big of a deal. Hmm. 
But yeah, I think that's overall all of the main cast. No, the like characters. It's a problem. I'm not talking about that. Joker himself is a main protagonist. That fucking sucks. You, you like that? Yeah, the person that like the Joker fucking sucks. He doesn't suck, but he's not a good character. He's just bland, you know? And that's the whole mm. point. He's just a blank sheet so you can insert yourself. It's kind of like one of those fan fiction self inserted characters. It's just like you become the main character, you know? It's like in fucking, let's say Naruto become Naruto or something. That's that type of thing. Imagine if Naruto was just a blank character. Like any other character for a fuck in the main story. So you can insert yourself in his shoes and be like, oh, that could, that's me. That's me right there. It's like, no, nah, no, just the blank character. I was like, I totally have curly black hair. Mm. <laughs> I'm totally that high, that skinny, and I have that type of hair. That's me. That's me right there. Mom, look at me. Look at me playing as a cool guy. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. But no, but yeah. This topic I mentioned before, but when did you realize you did not like Persona 5? Again, again, it's not that I didn't like Persona 5, it's that uh, I feel like the, yeah, because the remember, game is mediocre. Yeah. I remember when you and I beat Persona 5, we were a little bit more positive than we are now. No. Like we talked no, about like, oh, no, yo, the no, ending no, no, thing no, was no. great, though. No, 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 that's wrong, that's wrong. Uh, that's completely wrong. Mentioned. The the moment I started disliking Persona 5 and the moment I started talking shit about Persona 5 and I started talking to sh shit about Persona 5 to you, I remember this, it was when I was at the, fi at the final palace of the politician. I don't even know his fucking name. Like, I was in that palace. I realized everything wrong with the game and everything that I disliked about the game was concluded in that one segment. You know? Like, before mm. that, I didn't think I didn't think the game was that bad, right? I didn't think the game had that many issues. I should say, I should rephrase it to uh, like I didn't think the game had that many issues prior to the fifth palace. But the moment I got to the fifth palace, I realized how much I disliked the repetitive the the filler and the repetitiveness of the combat and shit like that, and how many of the characters are actually bad or they're just not interesting. So that's the moment I started kind of waking up towards the reality of Persona 5 and just mm. started talking shit to you about it too. So yeah. But I think you beat the game and you still thought the game was decent. You were yeah, like, you were more blindsided than me. I don't want to say that, but like, yeah, but once I played through Final Fantasy 15 and like, and then Kingdom Hearts 3, it's like, yeah, Persona 5 fucking sucks balls. Mm. But yeah, that's. I think that's the. Yeah, well, that sounds about right. About what time we started disliking Persona 5. Yeah, it's like, it's not a bad game, but like, there's so many better games out there. Overall, half of the cast is really bland, forgettable, or, or uninteresting. The gameplay gets stale, repetitive, and boring after the fourth palace. The music, same, it's good, but it gets repetitive after a while because you hear it so many times, you know, it's like listening to the same song over and over and over for hours and hours. At one point, you're going to get bored of it. Um, the main character, he isn't bad, he, but he isn't good either. He just, he's just a blank sheet, you know, there's nothing special about him. Even his design is cool, but it's not special, there's nothing that unique about him. Yeah, the, in the end of the day, Persona 5 is not a bad game, far from it. Like, I played a game where it was genuinely bad. Like, everything about it, gameplay-wise, music-wise, game uh, story-wise, it was just bad. Persona 5 is not one of them. And it's like, if it's your first Persona game, it will be like a fantastic experience. Like, if it's your first year RPG, it will be an amazing experience, no doubt about it, but like... Until the <sighs> end. Until the end. It yeah. will be fun. Until you get to the fifth palace, then you're just gonna and start disliking the game. Like me, most likely. Yeah, Especially if you listen to this podcast and then you play the game. Oh. <laughs> no, I was thinking, like, maybe I'm just falling out with JRPG because it's been a while since I played another JRPG. Maybe that could be it. 
And it's like, I still have not played another JRPG in a while, so maybe that could be it. Maybe I've grown old. I don't know, maybe, but just... I don't know if you if you don't if you can handle I would say overall I've said like the negatives before but it does the game does have some good characters I give it that much they have, does have good music although it's repetitive the music is good and visually wise the visually wise the game looks really nice it's really unique the way it looks and it looks good and the atmosphere for the slice of life aspect where you just walk around the city is amazing a 10 out of 10 for the walking and shit like that you know that's there is a lot of really details good. in those areas as well that you probably yeah. will miss in your couple of playthrough yep and there's lots of mini games and shit like that you most likely are gonna miss that you can later on you can go and see them again so it does do quite a lot of things right while mostly most of this podcast was negative towards Persona 5 that's not the reality of of the game. The game is decent. It's just not a masterpiece. And it's not as good as people make it out to be. There's quite lots of flaws in, in the game that could be easily fixed by cutting out the unnecessary content that was put in there just so it can justify like the price of being 70 euros. Mm-hmm. At least that's how I feel. And if you like the game despite all its issues, you can look past that. Like, more powers to you, honestly. If you can say that you love Final Fantasy XV and Persona 5 at the same time, you're like, I don't know, God or something. Sure, I wish I loved, per- I loved Persona 5 as much as other people do. I I still really like the game. It was my first Persona game. And I still really enjoy it, you know. Uh, I'm never going to forget the good times I had with the game, especially in the beginning. And like I said, the slice of life aspect, which I keep re- talking about, like that's the thing that I really liked about the game, and I'm never gonna forget that. That's that was an amazing mm. experience. But yeah, the man is an amazing track as well. Yeah, and I still listen to it, honestly. Like it's it's great, but it's not my favorite game, and it's I don't think it's in a top. It's, I don't think it's my top five favorite games. But still a solid game. Mm. Uh, don't know if I have anything else to say about the game, honestly. I think I have something more to say about the community. The community is fucking dog shit. <laughs> like, Jesus. It's cunts, man. Like, oh, Persona 5 was such an amazing game. <sighs> like, can you suck the dick of Persona 5 more? Like, Jesus fucking Christ. Like, come on. Like, uh, I get it. I get it. You like the game, but you don't have to could say that everything compared to Persona 5 is dog shit and that the other games are horrible you know when you haven't even played them because most of the cunts haven't played the other Persona the other Persona most games people they have just played Persona, Persona 5 Persona, they just play Persona 5 and haven't played the other Persona games and they immediately say that the other Persona games are shit because they look bad and honestly shit I don't get why they just remastered Persona 4 and Persona 3 and they make the game look as good as Persona 5. That would be amazing. You know? Uh, but Atlas hates money. I guess they do. So... And I'm just... Uh, yeah? Hey, you go on. I was, just gonna, I was just gonna say, that's what I hate about the community. How... Mm. How... They go on their high horse that Persona 5 is like a top game that most games can reach the standard of and shit like that. I just kind of like, yes. Yeah, sit the fuck down, bitch boy. The game ain't that good. Like especially when they talk about the story and the, like the praise the story, and then you realize it's like, yo, Persona Five is like Persona Four and Three again, all over again. Mm. Like, like, in the end, it's lo- like, let's go yeah. against God. That's the most ty- tiresome trope in any fucking JRPG. Like, yo, you went against fate. I've seen that done a thousand times. Mm. Can you just imagine telling like a Persona Five fan, oh, you know that Persona Five is actually just Persona Three and Four, right? It's just like the same thing, just reskin with a better visuals. Like, hey, no, it's not, uh. I'm just thinking of ways. Like, chill. I'm chill. just thinking of ways to title this podcast as most clip baiting as possible, just so he make people hear this. <laughs> Persona 5, dog shit game. Uh, uh, zero, zero out of ten. <laughs> Would never play again. <laughs> it was like Final Fantasy 15 is better, which I, which did get me into a lot of hot water set points in communities. Just saying. 
I don't, I don't bother myself with that. And I would never, I never will. I hate commits. I understand. You know, like, yeah. Anyway, it's getting quite late now. Any last statement for Persona 5 or as a whole? Uh, no, honestly, I don't know. I think I said everything that I need to say. I said that the game isn't. I don't think the game is bad. It's just overrated. I said what I liked about the game and what I disliked about the game. And that the commu- mo- most of the community is horrible. They're just... They, they just can't open their eyes, you know? But, you know, overall, like you said, if you enjoy the game and you think it's a great game, more power to you, honestly. But, yeah, that's about it. All I can say is the final statement, like, Persona 5, it's a shame to count to 6. Mm. And I'll leave it at that. Anyway, thank you for listening to this week's podcast. And again, I'm going to fucking have BD Brazy over because I do not have enough brain powers to do this by myself anymore. <laughs> I'm dying inside. Help. I just kind of, I just kind of sad. And we're probably going to break that. It'll be fun. If you want to help out your local YouTuber, call it 222-345. Don't actually do that. You fucking retard. <laughs> anyway. Bye. I was about to end our call, by the way. That was... Wait.